Okay, we're going to derive Benoli's equation this time, which is um, a statement on fluids that's derived using the conservation of energy. So, this blue this blue thing is my fluid, and the red thing is basically the fluid as well. It's just to illustrate what's going on, what's changing. This is the fluid at one time interval, and this is the fluid at the second time interval. So the fluid has gone from this position to this position. You can see it's changed. Sorry if the diagram's not that clear, but I haven't really spent that much time drawing it. Um, if you want me to do a clear diagram, then I'll re-upload the video with that. Anyway, the red bit is is the important bit that you should be looking at because this this is how this is how this fluid has changed from this bit to this bit in, in a small time interval. We could call it dt. Um, it, this is this is going to be how how the how the proof is is used because the only thing that's changing is this uh, these red bits, so we can sort of ignore the bits in between. So that's how the proof is going to go. I'm really going to use the work energy theorem here. And see what comes out. If you know the really early equation, you'll know you know what 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 we're actually looking for. But this is just a formal proof of what's going on. It's not the most vigorous proof, but uh, it's it, it it's fairly it's fairly straightforward. It, it will work for these purposes. Okay, so the work the work here on this side is uh, is equal to change of kinetic energy plus change of potential energy. And in this case, the potential energy is is going to be the gravitational potential energy because of course this area this part of the pipe here could be at a different point to this part of the pipe here. And I will point out this doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily mean that this, this is the start of the pipe, this is the end of the pipe. This is only a small section of it. Uh, so this, 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 you could almost call this an element. So it, it's, it, it's, it's a very small section of the entire thing. Just, just use the derivation. It's not, the, it's not supposed to represent the whole of the pipe. And this is, and also, it just um, in this grey area, there is still fluid. Um, well, what we want the blue area is sort of an imaginary volume of fluid that the, the fluid that we are just considering as it moves along it doesn't mean there's no fluid here and there's only fluid here so that's just one th important thing to understand so with that in mind I'm going to express this left side hand side of the equation uh, the, the, the network in terms of this so what's going on here is that you could express a work as an integral of a force over a distance um, obviously a force is the, is the same as a pressure area um, at, at this point here, we've got a, we've got a, a pressure that's acting on an area, and so we have at this point here uh, got a pressure as well that's acting on the fluid, and that uh, and it's and it's the sort of the pressure area that that's that's what, what uh, represents the force in this case. Um, the s the s one and s two are small distances, so I've approximated the integral by just saying um, that that um, I've assumed that the distance is sort of um, constant and uniform, so uh, that that's that's acceptable to do provided that s one and s two are very small. So that's basically a force over a distance. So what what we have is what we have is our work here. This this is the imp this is the input. Um, this is the work that the, that's being done on the fluid, minus the work that the fluid is doing. Uh, um, on, on its surroundings, basically. So what we have is the network, and you'll. And, and the reason for this negative sign is because we need a pressure differential. So if the pressure is higher at this point and lower at this point, then the fluid will flow. Obviously, if the pressure is the same at both points, then there won't be any flow of fluid. So that's basically what the minus sign is. The pressure, just to show that the fluid flows from a higher pressure to a lower pressure, as you would as you would expect. So that's very straightforward. Um, and then on the other side, we've got a, 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 a change of kinetic and potential energy. So it's just the usual. We've got um, you notice that on this side we're starting with the subscript two rather than the subscript one. Well, that's just to represent that we're that we're looking at a change of kinetic energy. So, um, so so the kinetic energy at the end minus the kinetic energy at the beginning. Um, so we're looking at these red bits. So the kinetic energy of this red bit minus kinetic energy of of this red bit. Uh, obviously, I'm assuming that the kinetic energy is uniform throughout the red bit, which is a reasonable approximation to make because we're assuming it's very small. Um, same with the gravitational potential energy; it's exactly the same. So m m two g h two minus m one g h one. So that's just a change in gravitational potential energy. Okay. What I've done is I've expressed this side in terms of volume. So I've I've said that my area times this small dis displacement is equal to is equal to a little volume one and a little volume two, which is actually the red bits again. Uh, you can see that these these red bits are quite important. So, so that that's just that's just a real equation. Nothing difficult there. Uh, we can express the volumes actually in terms of a mass over a density. Uh, we've got a mass one here and a mass two here, and the density is uniform throughout, which for a liquid like water is fairly reasonable. Although it might not be reasonable for say a, a composite fluid, or or something like that. I'll, I'll make another point here. This Bernoulli equation only works for what we might call an ideal fluid, a fluid that has zero viscosity. In practice, this doesn't really make any sense. But if the if the viscosity is very small, this will be an excellent approximation. 
uh, if you if you have if you look at viscous flow, then what you have is you have shear forces to act on the on the flow. And, 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 the, and the issue is that the um, the fluid moves at different speeds uh, depending on where it is uh, where it is in the pipe. So, for example, at, at the edges, it it'll, it won't move at all, but in the middle, it'll move to maximum speed. So, I'm I'm not considering this. So, I'm assuming that the flow is completely non-viscous. Uh, which is a reasonable approximation for some fluids. I mean, water is viscous to a certain extent, uh, but this this will work as a reasonable approximation. So, anyway, that's just a small rewrite. Uh, what we can say here is that m1 is equal to m2. And, and why is this the case? Well, m1 is basically the the mass of this red thing here, and m2 is the mass of this uh, of this red thing here. It does the they're not necessarily exactly the same shape, and the the, the probably won't be if if, if the if the um, area is different here and the area is different here uh, but the point is that the volume of liquid is the same in these two places because this whole fluid um, element is moved from this point to this point so we've still got the same amount of fluid here as we have here because the amount of fluid that's been left uh, that's that we've left here is is the same as the amount that's been gained here and we'll put out this is just an, a, a sort of imaginary volume of fluid because there is volume of there is more fluid in this gray bit here it's just that we're not considering that we're only considering this particular uh, volume of fluid. So um, it, it's fairly reasonable to suggest that the mass of this bit is going to be equal to the mass of this bit and of course the volumes are going to be the same as well. So M1 is obviously equal to M2 um, and, what, and what we can do is, is basically cancel cancel all the M's out. So that's basically what I've done here. I've just got rid of M, all the M's because there's a factor of M all the way through. So I, we end up with this equation here. Um, well, actually, this is basically a bit earlier question. It's just just a matter of tidying it up. So I've turned through by the density to give this, okay. And then I've just put uh, all the wa all the subscript ones on one side and all the subscript twos on the other side. Uh, and this and this sort of gives an important consequence. We say that this this left um, this this quantity here, um, the the pressure of the fluid, plus half times the density times the velocity of the fluid. Plus uh, the density times the gravity. Well, g g is basically assumed that, the, 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 of course, we're, we're on Earth. I mean, we might not be. We might be doing this on the Moon, in which case you'd have to change the, this sort of thing. And of course, this this will also depend on on, on whether, whether you actually have a. I mean, I mean, this this would be zero if you don't actually have a height difference. But um, for the purposes of saying that h is more than zero, then this would work on the planet Earth. So that's what's important. So P is obviously the so 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 this is the density of the gravitational constant H. So the, the point is that all of this th this is going to remain constant throughout a non-viscous fluid.